In this video, I'm going to go over some of the rounding functions available in C for working with double values. So the first thing we're going to do is include math.h because math.h is the library where these functions are defined. And math.h comes with C, so you're always going to have access to it. And then I'll make a variable here, double x is equal to 4.4. So I've got some number to test these functions with. And there's actually a series of functions that I want to test. And I want to show you them at once, all together. So that way you can kind of see the difference between how they work with some actual examples. And we'll actually call the functions and then print out the result. So we'll say here, print f, and I'll say round percent dot two f is equal to percent dot two f slash n. And I'm gonna output x, and then the result of calling the round function with x as an argument. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna output x here, and I'm gonna output the result of calling the round function with x here. So round is our first function, it accepts it accepts a double value as an argument and it returns a double value as a result. That's why we're outputting it there. And the dot two is just to sort of make the numbers a bit smaller when we actually output them there. And then we just put it on a new line just that way we actually kind of can more cleanly format our output here. So round is the first function, but there's actually several more. And I wanna show you them all at once just so that we can see the difference between how they work. So the next one is called C-E-I-L and that's short for ceiling. And we'll say C-E-I-L over here. And then floor is the next one. And there's one more called trunk. We'll say trunk. So trunk is what it's called. And that's short for truncate. And let's actually test out how these functions work by just calling them with different numbers and explaining how it works. So we'll save that. We'll do a recompilation over here and then we'll run it. And we get that 4.4 .4 rounds to four, but ceiling here, like C-E-I-L, ceiling function, it rounds it to five. Floor rounds it to four and trunk rounds it to 4.00 as well. So what's going on here? Why are they behaving different? So there's different ways of rounding numbers and the round function works most closely to how you were likely taught how to round numbers in a mathematics course, say when you were a child in school or whatever, where round is gonna look at this fractional portion of the number here. And if it's 0.5 or higher, we're gonna say that it rounds away from zero. So if it's 0.5 or higher, it's going to round away from zero to the next integer. So in this case here, it is not 0.5 or higher. So instead of rounding away from zero to the next, you know, integer, it rounds towards zero in that case to the next integer, which is going to be four. So we get four over here. If this was say 4.5 though, and we did a compilation and we ran it, we get five. And that's because for 0.5 or higher, round is gonna round away from zero to the next integer, which is gonna be five in this case. Now ceiling and floor, these actually work in a bit of a simpler kind of a way in the sense that ceiling here, no matter what this decimal is, it's gonna round to the next highest integer value. So this could be like 0.1 and ceiling will still round it to five. So if we do recompilation, run it, ceiling still rounds it to five. Whereas with floor, it's always gonna round to the next lowest integer. So if this was like 4.9, that's not gonna matter. For floor, it's still gonna round it to four. So ceiling always rounds to the next highest integer, floor always rounds to the next lowest integer. And then trunk is probably the simplest one. Trunk rounds towards zero no matter what. What that means as a practical matter is it's always going to just rip off this decimal point and replace it with a zero. So you can think of it as just sort of ripping off the decimal point and replacing it with a zero. We can say though that it rounds towards zero always. That's another way of putting it is that it always rounds towards zero. So what about something like this? What if we said 4.49? What's the behavior going to be there? Because you might think that like this would round it up to 0.5 and therefore round here would round up to five in that case. But if we do a recompilation and we run it, we see that round will still round down to 4.000. And then if we get ceiling of 4.49, that's gonna go to five, floor is gonna go to 4.0, and trunk is gonna go to four. And this shouldn't be too surprising based on what we've said, but that's what happens. Now, another thing that'd be interesting to try is a negative number. So what if we tried like negative 3.2? What's gonna happen there? This is where the terminology I was using, round towards zero, round away from zero, that's where that's gonna really matter. So if we do a clear here and we do a recompilation and we run it, 
we get minus 3.00 here. So what's going on? So what's going on is that we said that if this fractional component here is 0.5 or higher in the case of round, it's going to round away from zero. If it's not, it rounds towards zero. So that's why here it's going towards zero. We're getting like minus 3.00 here. If it was 3.5 and we do a recompilation run it, we get minus 4.0 here. Because it's 0.5 or higher, it rounds away from zero. So it goes to minus 4.00 here. Now, the reason why I'm kind of emphasizing this point is that it's easy to get confused here. You might look at this and say, well, wait a second, round when it's 0.5 in this case is rounding to a lower number. It's rounding to minus 4.00, which is a lower number than minus 3.0. But that's not what it does, right? That's why I said it rounds away from zero if it's 0.5 or higher. It's rounding away from zero and it's going to minus 4.00 here. Now, ceiling and floor, what's happening here in the case of ceiling is interesting. So it's 0.5 here and you might think, well, it's going to be minus 4.0 in the case of ceiling, right? Because you think like, well, it rounds like up and like four is the bigger thing than three. So it's going to round up. But we said with ceiling that it's going to round to the next highest integer. And in this case here, the next highest integer is minus 3.00, right? Because minus 3.0 is going to be higher than minus 4.0, right? And same thing with floor. Floor here is rounding to the next lowest integer, which in this case is going to be minus 4.0. And the reason why this could be confusing is if we had 3.5 here and we do a recompilation and we run it, in that case, ceiling goes to 4.0 and floor goes to 3.0. And that makes sense though, because in this case of a positive number, the next highest integer for ceiling is gonna be four. And the next lowest integer for floor is gonna be 3.0, right? So it actually does make sense. It does make sense if you think about it in that way, that you know ceiling rounds up to the next highest integer, floor rounds down to the next lowest integer. And then trunk is again, I think the simplest one because trunk just rips off the decimal value here. We could say that it rounds towards zero. That'd be the other way of putting it here. And so in the case of like 3.5, it's going to be 3.0. When we had negative 3.5, it was negative 3.0 there. And these rounding functions all just have these different behaviors because sometimes when we're writing programs, we want these different behaviors. But if we're going to write programs, we should be aware of these differences. Just that way we know what to expect. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.